Well, good evening, everybody. Tonight we'll start uh, with a public hearing uh, dated for October 26, 2021. Uh, it's being held here in the Village of Elmont Council Chambers at 735 Cranberry Lake Road in Belmont, BC. So I'll just call the public hearing to order and uh, adoption of the agenda for this evening. Councillor Pearson, Councillor McLean, all in favor? It's carried. Under 3.1, this public hearing is being convened pursuant to the terms of the Local Government Act prior to consideration of three items. Number one, temporary use permit 2103, temporary residential structure at 1945 Cranberry Place. Number two, temporary use permit 2104, temporary residential structure at 1133 14th Avenue. Number three, temporary use permit 2105, temporary residential structure at 1070 14th Ave. At a public hearing, any person present who believes that they are affected by a matter being considered shall be given an opportunity to be heard on the matter contained in the proposal. Members of the public, speaking to the proposal should at the appropriate time, commence your address to this council by stating your name and area of residence, at which time you may then give us the benefit of your views concerning the proposal. Anyone who deems their interests are affected shall be given the opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views known. All who submit comments at this public hearing will restrict their remarks to matters contained in the proposal and it is my responsibility as chairperson of this meeting to ensure that all remarks are so restricted. At the conclusion of a public hearing, Council may, without further notice, give whatever effect Council believes proper to the representation made at the meeting. With that, on to temporary use permit 2103 proposed RV use at 1945 Cranberry Place 4.1 a presentation by staff Krista Eddy planner <laughs> the first item on tonight's public hearing agenda is an application for a temporary use permit requesting to permit one temporary structure to be used as a residence for a period of one year Temporary Use Permit 2103 proposes to allow one recreational vehicle to be parked on the property at 1945 Cranberry Place. The property is legally described as Lot 6, District Lot 7354, Caribou District Plan 19779, except Plan 30941. The application satisfies the requirements outlined in the tempor Temporary Residential Structure Policy 83, including water, sewer, and power servicing as well as garbage disposal structure location, and the RV has been approved by the building inspector. At the regular council meeting of September 28th, council gave initial approval to the, for the proposed temporary use permit. Since then, adjacent property owners have been notified of the proposal and affected residents have been invited to provide feedback via written submissions to the village office or at this evening's public, <coughs> excuse me, uh, public hearing. Thank you very much. Are there any under 4.2, the reading aloud of written submissions? As of noon today, there were no written submissions received from the public. Thank you. Any persons present uh, would wish to make a uh, verbal presentation? For a second time, any verbal presentations from the public. For a third. Are there any, I don't see an applicant in the room or on Zoom? Uh, no, nothing on Zoom and no comments on YouTube. Thank you. 4.6, are there any questions of the proponent by council or by two staff? Point of clarity. Then we will move on to item five, uh, proposed RV use at, uh, proposed use, per, uh, temporary use permit 2104, proposed RV use at 1133 14th Ave. Under 5.1, we have uh, Miss Eddie, planner for the village uh, to give us a presentation. 
The second item on tonight's public hearing agenda is also for a temporary use permit requesting one temporary structure to be used as a residence for one year. Uh, temporary use permit 2104 proposes to allow one recreational vehicle to be parked on the property at 1133 14th Avenue. The property is legally described as lot 38 plan PGP 26762 district lot 735, <coughs> excuse me, 55 district land district 05. The application satisfies all the requirements outlined in temporary residential structure policy 83 including water, sewer, and power servicing, as well as garbage disposal and structure location. The RV has been approved by the building inspector. At the regular council meeting of September 28th, council gave initial approval for the proposed temporary use permit. Since then, adjacent property owners have been notified of this proposal and affected residents have been invited to provide feedback via written submissions or at tonight's public hearing. Thank you very much. Are there, under 5.2, are there any written submissions or summary of submissions? As of noon today, no submissions were received. Thank you very much. Are there any verbal, under 5.3, are there any verbal presentations from the public? A second time, any verbal presentations from the public? And for a third and final, are there any verbal presentations from the public? Thank you. 5.4, are there, is a proponent present or uh, either in person or electronically? Uh, not in person or electronically and no comments on YouTube. Thank you. Carries 5.5, are there any questions of the proponent or to staff from council for clarity? On to item six, temporary use permit number 2105, proposed RV use at 1070 14th Ave. Under 6.1, we again have Ms. Eddy here uh, from the planning department uh, to give a presentation. The third item on tonight's public hearing agenda is another application for a temporary use permit requesting one temporary structure to be used as a re residence for one year. Temporary use permit 2105 proposes to allow one recreational vehicle to be parked on the property at 1070 14th Avenue. The property is legally described as parcel A, plan PGP 26762, district lot 7355, land district 05, being a consolidation of lots eight and nine, CCA 4751352. The application satisfies the requirements outlined in the temporary residential structure policy 83, including water, sewer, and power servicing, as well as garbage and structure location. And this RV has also been approved by the building inspector. At the regular council meeting of September 28th, this application was giving initial approval. Since then, adjacent property owners have been notified of the proposal and affected residents have been invited to provide feedback or at this evening's public hearing. Thank you much, Ms. Eddy. Under 6.2, have there been any written submissions or summary of submissions? Uh, as of noon today, no written submissions were received. Thank you. Under 6.3, are there any verbal presentations from the public? For a second time, under 6.2, 6.3, are there any verbal presentations from the public? And for a third and final, are there any verbal presentations from the public? Thank you. Is the proponent present either in person or electronically? No, they're not, and no comments on YouTube as well. So. Thank you. 6.6, 6, are there any questions of the proponent or to staff by Council for Clarity? Thank you. I'll now adjourn the public hearing. Next item up on the agenda is the regular council meeting held in the Village of Elma, Tuesday, October 26, 2021. Uh, first up is call to order and uh, adoption of the agenda under 2.1. Councillor G, Councillor Blanchett, are there any additions? All in favor? It's carried. Adoption of the previous minutes being October 12, 2021. Councilor Pearson, 
Councillor McLean, are there any in, uh, errors or omissions arising? All in favor? It's carried. Under 4.1, I'm truly honored to have this delegation from the Royal Canadian Legion, uh, Branch 266, with the presentation of their first poppy. President G, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Torgerson and Council. My name is Clayton G, and I'm currently serving as the president of Branch 266 of the Royal Canadian Legion. The Valemont Branch has been proud to serve the residents of the village since its opening in 1966. Our mission is to serve veterans, including those currently serving and in the RCMP, and their families to promote remembrance and to serve our communities in our country. As you've likely seen, this year we were successful in having banners showcasing some of our local veterans hung along Fifth Avenue to help keep their memories alive. 2021 marks the 100th anniversary of the Rem Remembrance Poppy in Canada. In July of 1921, Madame Anna Guerin was expired by John McRae's in Flanders Fields to distribute poppies on Armistice Day as a way to raise money for the veterans' needs and to remember those that had given their lives during the First World War. That same month, the Great War Veterans Association adopted the poppy as the flower of remembrance. Following that, in 1925, they unified with other veteran groups to form the Canadian Legion. Since then, the Legion and its members have upheld this tradition of remembrance. As such, I am honored to present Mayor and Council with the first poppy of the year to honor and remember Canada's fallen. Thank you very much, Mr. G. Uh, motion, please, to uh, receive the delegation. Councillor Blanchett, Councillor G, any questions or discussion points around the de delegation? Thank you very much. <laughs> All in favor of receipt? Carried. Under 6.1, we have some community consultation committee appointments to consider. Uh, recommendation one here that a member of the council be appointed to the Canoe Valley Recreation Community Consultation Committee for a period of one year. 
Uh, Councillor Pearson, would you uh, rise to the occasion? I will carry on with that for another year. Seconder, Councillor G. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And two, that a member of council be appointed to the Vail Mountain, uh, uh, Vail Mountain District Fire and Rescue Community Consultation Committee for a one-year term. Councillor Blanchett, do you wish to rise? I can continue, yes, thank you. Seconder, Councillor McLean, discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.2, we have an appointment of a municipal director to the Regional District Fraser Port, Fort George Board and a recommendation here that a member of council and an alternate uh, be appointed to the Regional District Fraser Fort Board of Directors for a one-year term commencing November 18th, 2021. What's council's wish? Uh, are you willing to carry on as our... Okay. Seconder. Councillor Pearson uh, moves. Councillor G seconds. Uh, we'll deal with the alternate after. All in favor? And for uh, the alternate, I would recommend um, further in the recommendation that Councillor G be named alternate. Councillor Blanchett, seconder. Councillor McLean, uh, being the fourth and final uh, member of council as a alternate for the year, would, would you accept? Yep. Okay. Well, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Is there anything in the reading file the council would like to highlight? Councillor Pearson. Yeah, I was just going to. Uh bring forward item, I think it's item seven, uh, the Canadian EX, EHX sponsorship. Um, I'd be curious to pursue this further to uh, look at possibly sponsoring this um, and maybe have staff look into it and report back um, to have Belmont uh, highlighted in one of his features. Seconder. Councillor Blanchett, further discussion? Is there uh, clarity needed on the motion? All in favor? It's carried. Further from the reading file? I will bring forward, are you making a, a move there, Councillor? No? I would like to bring forward the Youth Parliament uh, British Columbia and that uh, Valmount sponsor a $425 registration fee should uh, a uh, youth be selected by their peers uh, through selection uh, from the village Valmount. Councillor Pearson, seconds? I will in discussion. Discussion? I'm uh, just noticing on the application the uh, deadline was October 26th, which is today. I don't think anybody's going to apply for that then. Just a little note at the bottom of the page there. Well, so. that, I would call for a defeat of the motion then. All in favor? Oh, geez, we got mixed bag here. <laughs> call the question again. All in favor? One. Two in favor, in opposition. I'm sorry, what are we doing? <laughs> we need to defeat the motion. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yes. Motion's defeated. Does anybody want their opposition recorded? Very good. It would, it would have been great to see this earlier to, uh, to pursue it, but. Indeed, I should have taken it to uh, Derek much, much sooner. Oh. That I did. Okay. Anything further from the reading file? Administrative reports. Village of Elmont under 8.1, the Village of Elmont project update. The report be received for information. Councillor McLean, Councillor Pearson, a discussion. Lots of good work. Mm -hmm. Lots to come. A lot. Mm -hmm. All in favor of receipt? It's carried. 
8.2, we have a bylaw enforcement summary, August 2021. Report to be received. Councilor Blanchett, Councilor McLean, discussion. All in favor of receipt. It's carried 8.3 bylaw enforcement summary for September 2021. Uh, report being received. Councillor G, Councillor McLean, discussion on uh, Councillor Pearson. Yeah, and just uh, in seeing these two months reports, uh, I think it's nice to have Mr. Smith back on, on the beat and pursuing some of these. Excellent. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.4 uh, Centennial Park parking concerns. Uh, re recommendation here, report being received. Councillor G, Councillor Blanchett, discussion. Councillor Pearson? Have we had any word on how this is working? I drive by there fairly frequently. I can't say I've noticed any change in traffic patterns. I'm just wondering if staff has noticed anything. Ms. Shepard, Ms. Knee? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Perhaps it could be monitored for the uh, back to work, Mr. Evans. <laughs> All in favor of receipt? It's carried. 8.5 water, uh, water supply master plan for the well drilling program. A recommendation here that council approves an additional 20,140 from the Northern Capital Planning Grant for the purpose of supporting additional costs to the well drilling program with uh, Kayla Geosciences Limited. What's council's wish? Councilor McLean, Councilor Pearson, discussion. If they hit pay dirt, they'd like to do a second one or go a little deeper. 31 liters a second, and that's pay dirt. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Excuse me. 8.6, Northern Development Initiative Trust, Business Facade Improvement Program, recommendation here that staff be directed to apply to NDIT for their business facade program a business facade improvement program to continue the NDIT improvement program through 2022. Councillor Pearson, Councillor Blanchett, discussion. Councillor Blanchett. The Village and the Chamber of Commerce have been partners with this with um, Northern Development Initiatives Trust and it's a really good program and we've had lots of businesses that have taken part in this um, so it's really great to be a part of it again. Awesome. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.7, temporary use permit 2103 at 1945 Cranberry Place. Recommendation here that temporary use permit 2103 at 1945 Cranberry Place, legally described as lot six, district lot 7354, Caribou District, plan 1977, Nine, except plan 30941, proposing a temporary residential structure be given final approval. Councillor Pearson, Councillor Blanchett, any discussion on the TUP? All in favor? It's carried. Temporary use permit under 8.8, .8, temporary use permit 2104. Recommendation here that TUP 2104 at 1133 14th Avenue, legally described as lot 38, PGP 26762, District Lot 7355, Land District 05, proposing a temporary residential structure be given final approval. Councillor Blanchett, Councillor McLean, discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.9 Temporary Use Permit 2105 at 1070 14th Avenue. Recommendation here that TUP 2105 for 1070 14th Avenue, legally described as Parcel A, Plan PGP 26762, District Lot 7355, last, Land District 05, being a consolidation of Lots A and 8 and 9C, CA 4751352, proposing a temporary residential structure be given final approval. Councillor G, Councillor Pearson, 
Uh, any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.10, temporary use permit 2106 at 33 Cedar Street. Recommendation here that temporary use permit 2106 for 23 Cedar Street, legally described as lot B, plan EPP 67986, district lot 9778, land district 05, proposing a temporary residential structure be given initial approval. Councillor Blanchett, Councillor McLean, any discussion on initial approval? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Excuse me. Section 9, bylaws and policies, 9.1. Village of Belmont permissive tax exemption bylaw number 851. Recommendation here that the Village of Elma Permissive Tax Exemption Bylaw Number 851 2021 be adopted as presented. Councillor G, Councillor Blanchett, discussion on final adoption. All in favor? It's carried. 9.2 Village of Valmont Council Remuneration Bylaw Number 853 2021. Recommendation here that Village of Valmont Council Remuneration. Bylaw number 853-2021 be given first, second, and third reading. Councillor Blanchett, Councillor Pearson, discussion. All in favor? It's carried. No new business brought forward. Is there a notice of motion? Item 12, Council reports. Uh, Councillor G. Um, October 14th, we had uh, CAO interviews, and Monday, October 18th, CAO interviews. And I believe that's all I have to report. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Pearson. Uh, likewise, October 14th and 18th, uh, the CAO uh, Zoom interviews. Thank you. Councilor McLean. Um, on October 14th, I have had a busy day. I participated in a, a Columbia Basin Trust local government uh, committee telecon, attended a housing committee meeting, and participated in interviewing chief administrative officer candidates in the evening with the rest of council. On the, October 15th, I was honor tracked as deputy mayor and participate in the North Central Regional check-in call with Minister of Municipal Affairs, Josie Osborne. Uh, it was interesting to hear the news and stories and concerns of other municipalities as well as share some of ours. On October 18th, we were again in CAO interviews and on the, October the 19th, I attended a Vailmount Entertainment Society meeting to plan the budget for the next operating year. Um, I wanted to say that uh, this is a very gratifying society to be a part of as we move toward getting more and more television and radio channels for the community. Um, and to let everybody know that at this time we're looking for new members to join the board um, and to help continue this work. So if you are interested in being a part of this board, uh, to please contact the coordinator, Mr. Michael Peters, at the local television station office, 566-8288. Thank you. It's a great pitch. <laughs> Councillor Blanchett. Um, on the 14th, we had a housing meeting uh, and CAO interviews, as well as on the 18th, CAO interviews. The 19th, we had our Clean Air Task Force meeting. And we're just putting our final ducks in a row to start some... Um, uh, major programs that you will all be aware of very shortly. And on the 25th, we had an elder care meeting, um, which was held yesterday. Um, and that was it. All right. Thank you. Uh, on the 13th, I attended a Varda AGM. Uh, some new directors, so much thanks to the outgoing directors um, and the incoming directors of that organization. Uh, on the 14th, I attended the Housing Committee meeting. Uh, later on the 14th, I took in the public health announcement, which had further restrictions for the Northeast. Uh, on the, later that day, 
uh, had an interview uh, around the social economic impacts of the Trans Mountain Expansion Project worker accommodation facility in Cedarside. Uh, Simp have hired a um, Simp First Nation have hired a uh, standalone contractor to see uh, to flesh out those those impacts up and down the um, pipeline. Uh, and then later that evening had CAO interviews with you all um, on October 15th with much thanks to uh, Councillor McLean I was able to participate in a Southeast BC Connectivity Committee panel meeting uh, with MLA uh, Roley Russell who also serves as the Par Parliamentary Secretary of Rural Development. And then on the 18th uh, Again, with the Southeast BC Connectivity Committee, uh, we had a strategic planning session which was taken on by the Special Initiatives uh, Program through Columbia Basin Trust. And then again, joined you all for uh, CIO interviews. October 19th, uh, I was able to pitch with Dr. Markham a pilot project uh, regarding our ER, our emergency uh, department, uh, to uh, Leanne Heppel, who is the uh, Executive Vice President for uh, BC Emergency Health Services, and Mr. Troy Clifford, who is the President of the uh, Ambulance Paramedics uh, of BC Union. On the 21st, uh, remotely took part in a Regional District Broadband Committee meeting, a Regional District Committee of the Whole, Regional District Public Safety and Emergency Management Committee, uh, the Regional Hospital Board, a closed session of the Regional District Board, and an open session of the Regional Board. And then today I had a meeting with, uh, an in-person meeting, uh, finally, mm -hmm. with Mr. Ian Anderson, with Trans, uh, the President and CEO of uh, Trans Mountain, as well as with uh, Chief Loring and Councillor Ron Lampro of the Simp First Nation. Motion to receive, Councillor Blanchett, Councillor Pearson, uh, questions of the reports, discussion. How did your last meeting go? Good, good. I mean, nothing um, nothing in writing left that uh, discussion, but um, we are being asked to be creative so that they can be creative as well. So uh, they don't, there's not one silver bullet for the, the impacts that we're seeing. Um, and so we're going to have to see uh, what we can come up with, what they're able to fund. And uh, we're also been asked to see, uh, they're, they figure they're on target uh, for December, early December for the Blue River Camp, which is a 500 person occupancy. Um, and I, I suggested that the there would not be an influx of folks migrating from Valmont to Blue River, but there, um, that 500 new people would be added to the project and I was not um, debated with. So whether we, we see a migration or not, um, the Blue River camp is on schedule and we can at least go from there. Is, was he aware of the housing issues that we're having? Oh yeah, he's been well aware for a while. Okay. Do um, you have any kind of um, plan in place? No, I I started with uh, a potential renegotiation of our CBA, uh, but it was um, it was agreed that um, CBA is already established, and if there's a project or projects that we are seeing that could alleviate some of the housing issues that we see to bring it up with Trans Mountain and go from there. But yeah, Mr. Anderson is well aware of the one, 2.5 fold population within our boundaries. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor of receipt? It's carried. Uh, we have time this evening for public comment under 14.1 uh, on items considered by Council as part of the approved agenda. Are there any public comments this evening? <laughs> Second call for public comments. 
Then we will advance to uh, section 15, a notice to proceed in camera under 15.1. Recommendation here, the council proceeded to an in-camera council meeting for the consideration of two items per section 91 C and E of the community charter to discuss matters related to labor relations, C, labor relations and other employee relations, and E, the acquisition, disposition, or expropriation of land or improvements if council considers that disclosure could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality. It's council's wish. Councilor Blanchett, Councilor G, all in favor? It's carried. <laughs> 